Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1377. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great problem here. We have a list of students. And for each student, we have a row filled with Ys and Ns. And our goal down here is to find all of the Ns for a particular student and then list the assignments, which are at the top of each column down here. And if we simply change a student name, instantly everything should update. Now we're going to see how to do this a couple different ways. We'll list them vertically, each in a different cell. We'll see how to list them all in a cell. And then we'll even see how to list them vertically in a single cell. Now let's go over to the sheet. 1377. Seven. All right, so for our solution here, we're going to assume that the name of the student can change. So we obviously have that in a cell here. But the Ys and the Ns, we'll assume that those are always going to be part of our system. So we'll hard code the criteria right into our formula. Now, the first thing I want to do is count. So for Rob, I need to look up this row and then get a count of three Ns. If I change this to Ted, I need to find Ted over here, look through this entire row, and count the number of Ns. So the first part of this formula is going to be, there's the criteria, but I need to look up a whole row. And actually, we'll use that formula logic in the count cell and in our assignment extraction formula. All right, so you ready? I'm going to use the index function. The index function is an amazing lookup function. The array argument are all the items you potentially want to go look up. Now remember, for this first formula element, we're looking up a whole row. So we need to put every row into our lookup array. Now I do a comma, and then the row number. Well, if we were looking up Ted, I would need row number 1, 2, 3. So anytime we're looking up an item and finding the relative position of an item in the list, we use the match function. So match, lookup value, that's what we're going to look up and try and match, comma. Lookup array and match always has to be a single vertical or horizontal list. So match will look through there and find a match for Ted. Because that list right there is not sorted, I'm going to comma 0, close parentheses. Now if I select the row number and highlight that and hit the F9 key to evaluate it, sure enough, Ted is the third item in this list. Control Z. Well, guess what? That's the row number. But I also need to comma and get to column number. Now guess what? If I want the whole row, what I really want is every single column. So the way that you instruct column number argument inside of index to give me all the columns is to put a 0 or leave it omitted or empty. I'm going to leave it omitted, close parentheses, and there it is. Index to look up a row, there's all of the rows. There's the row number 3, and column number is blank. So when I F9 to evaluate it, sure enough, it absolutely looked up Ted's row. Control Z. Now I'm counting in this formula, so I'm going to use the count ifs function. Now the criteria range argument in count ifs cannot handle array operations. But lucky for us, the index function, when it spits out a range of values, it actually delivers a range object that count ifs can understand perfectly. So now I come to the end, comma, and the criteria is going to be in double quotes. We'll hard code NN, close parentheses, and enter. So now we see Ted has four. Rob would have three. Now down here in our lookup formula, we're actually going to use the same little formula element. So I'm going to click on criteria range 1 to highlight, and then Control C to copy, escape. Now I'm going to come down here equal sign, and then Control V. Remember, that's looking up the row. That's going to be part of our formula. Now, I'm going to click in each argument, because when I copy this formula down, I'm going to need everything locked. So I'm going to click on Array and hit F4 key. Then click inside of Match. 
Click on Lookup Value, F4. Now click on Lookup Array, F4. Now if I come to the end and hit F9, OK, so that's delivering the row. What I really need is an array of trues and falses saying, yes, this is an N. Yes, this is an N. So Control-Z. Right at the end, I'm simply going to ask the question, are you equal to, in double quotes, N? Now actually, Excel is not case sensitive. So I can put little n or big n, and either one will deliver a true. Now with my cursor at the end, I F9, there's my trues and falses. Now if I'm going to use this in index to pick out from this array of assignments, I'm going to need actually the relative positions here. So for that true, I really need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 7, 8. So Control-Z. In order to get that information from our array up here of assignments, I'm going to use the column function. So in reference, I'm going to highlight this row, which again happens to be filled with columns, right? And then close parentheses. Now normally, column, we put a single cell here, and it tells us a single column. But notice, I put a whole array in there. This is actually called a function argument array operation. I put a bunch of columns in there, so I'm telling column function to spit out a bunch of answers. So if I very carefully highlight it and hit the F9 key, there's all the columns. But that is not the correct relative position. Yes, it's actually column 2, but that won't work for the index function. That should be 1. So Control-Z from that column with a function argument array operation, I'm going to use column and simply select the very first cell in that range, close parentheses. And now if I highlight that in F9, it's one off. So I control Z, I simply add one. Now I'm going to need to put that in parentheses. And by the way, notice sometimes we use column, sometimes we use row, right? Since these are columns, we had to use column to extract the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. But now we have that array of relative positions. And I want to divide. And in the denominator, I have my trues and falses. Now, that operation right there has an equal sign. I need to force equal sign before division. Open parentheses and close parentheses. Now with my cursor at the end, I hit F9. And look at that. There's relative position 5, 7, and 8 that index can use to extract the correct assignment. Now notice there's errors there and some numbers that we need in our formula. Control-Z. As I copy the formula down, I'm going to need to extract 5, 7, and then 8. So we would like to use the small function. But the aggregate function will allow us to do a small calculation. And notice I hit Tab there. And it stole the parentheses from that columns array operation. So I'm very carefully going to open parentheses. And there, the first argument is function number. And if I scroll down, there's my small. That means I need the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, and so on. So I'm going to double click that 15. Now aggregate is the small function, comma. I need to ignore error values because I have divide by 0 errors in that array. So I double click that 6 or down arrow tab, comma. There's the array. Now remember, aggregate is small. So it's going to ignore the errors, and it will only see 5, 7, and 8. So now I need to come to the end and comma K. I need to give it 1, 2, 3, 4 as I copy down. So now I'm copying it down across the rows. So I'm not going to use columns. I'm going to use rows. Now I'm sitting in E14. So I'm going to type E dollar sign 14 to lock the row 14, colon E14, close parentheses. Now, rows will just say how many rows are there from 14 to 14. Well, obviously, that's 1. When I copy it down, that 14 will move to 15, which will be a 2, 3, 4, and so on. So there we go, close parentheses. That entire aggregate and all of that is just delivering the relative position. Now. I chose to use aggregate instead of small because right there, 
array in aggregate can handle array operations without using the special keystroke control shift enter. If we used small, we'd have to use that special keystroke. So I hit either hit enter or control enter or whatever I want. And now I'm going to copy it down and look at that. The index function can now use 5, 7, and 8 for Rob's quiz 3, homework 2, and quiz 4. Now, click in the top cell F2. Right after the equal sign, I type index. Array is always the potential items you want to go and look up. Those are the assignment names. F4 to lock it. And comma, there's our row number. Now, technically, that's not a row number. These are column numbers. But index is program. If you have a one-way array in the array argument, then it doesn't matter. You just put whatever the relative position is in row number, and it understands. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click, and send it down. And now I want to test this. I'm going to come up here and try Ted. And boom, there it is. Ted's outstanding assignments. Now we need to turn these num errors off. And I do not want to use if error here, because if error would rely on running this big array formula in every single cell, including down here. Since there is an alternative logical test, which is, are we past row number 4? Then we use that instead, and the formula is much more efficient. So now I type the if function, the logical test. Well, guess what? I'm going to need rows, so I'm going to cheat. I love screen tips. Now, remember, we had a number incrementer in K, so I click on the K. I highlight that rows, Control-C, and very carefully, I'm watching these screen tips. I click after the open parentheses, or I try to. There's my logical test, control V. If that number incrementer is greater than this count right here, F4 to lock it, that's our logical test. I type a comma. If we're past row 4, what do we want for value of true? Well, we want to show nothing. And the way we do that is with double quote, double quote. That's a zero length text string. Otherwise. The value of false, that's that whole formula. Now, notice the beauty of this is that whole formula value with false only gets run four times. Down here, it never gets a chance to run. Close parentheses. Now, you know what? The truth is, for a small data set, it wouldn't matter at all if you used if error. But on bigger data sets, this is incredibly important. Control-Enter. Double click and send it down. And now we're going to test it. I want to see Rob. Rob walks into the office. Hey, Rob, you need to finish these assignments. And remember, right here in this formula, the if actually dumped that huge formula. And it ran and evaluated here. But down here in this cell, the if function never had a chance to run the value if false. It actually just dumped double quote, double quote. All it did was run that and dump the zero length text string. All right, so that's how to extract it and list them vertically across the rows. If you were wanting to do it across the columns, then of course you would have used columns and locked the E, not the 14. Now, what if we wanted to list the assignments in a single cell? Well, we can do that, and we're actually going to use the text join function. Now, you have to have Office 365, Excel 2016, Insider Program to get the text join function. Now, if you sign up for the Insider Program, you actually get monthly updates with new features and sometimes new functions like this. Ah, but before we can use that, I'm just going to steal this little formula element over here. Click on criteria range, control C. Remember, that's the formula element that looks up the whole row of Y's and N's. I'm going to type an equal sign, control V. And now for Rob, F9, those are the Y's and N's, control Z. I'm simply going to ask the question, are any of you equal to N? F9, those gives me trues and falses. I'm going to use that array of trues and falses inside the if function logical test argument. Control-Z, 
I come right after the equal sign, I, F, tab, logical test. I come to the end, comma, and the value, if true, is going to be, please give me assignment names. I type a comma. Otherwise, what do I want? I want to show nothing. Double quote, double quote. There's our zero length text string. Close parentheses. F9. Check that out. Text items and double quotes, double quotes. We can use the text join and it will ignore all of the double quotes, double quotes. Control Z. Now inside of text join. It wants to know what the delimiter is. That's simply what item we put between the assignments in double quotes, comma, space, and double quote. So the delimiter will be a comma and a space, comma. And look at that, ignore empty. Now we can either put a true or a one or leave it omitted, and text join will know to ignore those double quotes, double quotes, comma. I'm going to leave it omitted. There's the text. Come to the end, close parentheses. Now, this is an array formula. And the array operation right there, equal sign to that range. Are you equal to that n? That's an operation done on an array. Because it's sitting in logical test argument, that argument can only understand this array operation if we use Control Shift Enter. Now, don't mix that up with what we did with count ifs. This itself is not an array operation. That was a range. But as soon as we do an operation on that range, because it's doing that operation on multiple items, that makes it an array operation. All right, so we have to use Control Shift Enter. I'm holding Control Shift and Enter. As soon as I use Control Shift Enter, you have to go up to the formula bar and verify that the those curly brackets were put in. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you it understood that this should be an array operation. Now I'm going to come over here and change it to Bill. Wow, look at that. Come down here and Dan. All right, so back to Rob. You know, if we didn't want it in a single cell listed horizontally, we could copy this in edit mode. And down here, F2, Control V, instead of using as the delimiter, a comma and a space, I could use the character function. And character function, if I put 10, that means please put ASCII character number 10 into the formula. And that is a line return. Now, actually, if you don't like to do that, I learned this awesome trick from Pomusco, one of our online Excel teammates. Double quote, and the keyboard for a line return is Alt-Enter. And double quote. So you could do it either way. I'm going to use the character function. All right, so you ready? Control, Shift, and Enter. Now, in order for that to work, I actually already had wrap text up here. If wrap text isn't on, then it looks like that. You have to wrap the text. All right, so now I come up here and I select Dan. There's a single test. Phil, there are four of them. All right, that's a little fun with looking up a particular student, finding all the ends, and returning missing assignments. We saw how to do it with text join index and character 10, text join and index, or an array formula to display the items vertically. And we started off with count ifs to count number of missing assignments. All right, we'll see you next video.